Hello viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a Uniden 900 megahertz analog cordless telephone. This is the model EXI2960. Now I got two of these recently. I was going to record both of them in the same video, but then I was remembering that time where I had released that video of the Clarity cordless phone twice, the second time by mistake, and it got even more views than the first time. And then I released it again, and it continued to get about the same number of views. So I guess if people will watch the same exact video multiple times, certainly they'll watch the same video, uh, or the of two videos of the same phone that are different videos. So I'm going to record these separately. This will be one and then this will be the, or the second one is over here. We'll do that one in another video. So this one I think was wall mounted. Whoops, that's great. It has the wall mount cord there, which I'm going to remove because we're not going to use that in this case. And then the wire was neatly tied up into an outlet, I guess. I'm also going to remove this because it's not going to work with the way the testing setup is here. On the top we have the input, which is the DC, the 9 volts, and the telephone line. There's no pulse or tone switch on here, so that must be a software change. Here is the AC adapter. It is the model number, the A, the D, the dash, the 3, the 1, the 0. And it is the AC 120 volts input. And it is the DC, the 9 volts, the 210 milliamps output with the center being the positive. Unfortunately it was made in the China so hopefully it still works. The outer covering is certainly starting to show its age but it probably has another several decades left of life. These are very very reliable and well made phones. The phone itself is also made in the China but it's old enough that it seems to be okay because there used to be acceptable quality things that came out of the China and in the 90s you know things were getting cheap but some things like this were still made pretty well so this telephone has it did come with a battery in it but it's not the original battery unfortunately it's a replacement and it is an inner cell battery and it's the nickel cadmium chemistry the 3.6 volts, the 700 milliamps, so it's very similar um, capacity to the original. Now I, what I find really odd is that the belt clip must be made out of a different kind of plastic than the rest of the phone because if you take it off You can see it's definitely been on this phone for its entire life because there's no yellowing underneath the clip. But yet the clip itself has absolutely no yellowing. So why then couldn't they make the rest of the phone out of the same material they made the clip out of? Then there wouldn't be a yellowing problem. I don't know. And I also am not sure why this won't go back on. There it goes. Uh, here's the headset jack. I don't like to open and close those because the rubber is getting brittle. The antenna of course is the broken so we'll have to make a new one. And um, I've never really used this handset at length. It's very very heavy and sturdy feeling even compared to other 900s like the 7980 for instance. This one feels a lot th just stronger. It feels like it's made of a thicker material. The ergonomics, the earpiece definitely is not as good. I don't know, the handset is okay. Bell clip seems pretty sturdy. There's the information on the bottom. The buttons have a very nice, solid quality feel to them. It does have 30 entries in the caller ID. And it looks like it got calls almost every day for a while. This entry is kind of comical. The 
invalid number. Yeah, got a fair number of calls. The last one, uh, we just lost the battery charge. Okay, that's fine, no problem. I got another battery I can put in. Alright, so this one, I guess this battery is no good. The battery and the other one did not work at all. So, let's see what we have here in the realm of replacement batteries. That's not the right size, but it'll work. And I'm not going to put that cover back on because I don't want this battery to get all sticky. Okay. So, the, whoops. The last call came in at 11.10. We're in uh, 4.02. I bought this last month. So, whoops. Maybe this was used up until last year. I don't know. Memories are empty, of course, because for whatever reason they seem to store those in volatile memory. I not fathom why in the world they would do that, especially considering how difficult it is to type the memories in. Um, okay, I think that's all the preliminary things there are to say about this thing. So, I'll put this back in the cradle there. And, oh, here's another item of trouble. The light flicks really, really quick when it's charging. The other one is doing that too. I've never seen a unit do that before. I don't think that's normal. The light itself isn't bad because if we do a talk, it comes on steady like no problem. I thought it was maybe because the batteries were shot, but these batteries, well, I just happened to grab a Kaboom Kastar battery. Who knows if it's any good or not, but I don't know. I, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. It's almost like it's stuck in in um, security code resetting mode or something. Alright, let's go ahead and pull this thing up. And I didn't plug in the phone line, so let's uh, there for that one. I'm a little distracted by this flicking charge light. That's so odd. Caller ID is there. Okay, we'll change it to the other ringer. And let's see if we can get the auto talk to come on. Oh, the area code was set. That's kind of unusual. Okay, well, let's change that because we're in the 203 area. Okay, that did the work. Not sure why it's still ringing though. Talk. Hang up. Hmm. Okay, so it's receiving calls just fine. Let's do a page. There's that light flashing away, you know, steady. And it's going to be all flickery again when we go to charge. That's really odd. Alright, let's go to the main so we'll make an outside call.
the audio is very faint. I think we may have a spoiled receiver cap. Yeah, so I'm going to need a receiver cap. Not a big deal. I can get one of those. And uh, I'll have to make a new antenna. So it's two items to repair so far. Now I will call the testing engine machine and record a testing message to make sure the transmit is working. One new message and eleven old messages. Message one. I think we're going to have a problem here because it was not dialing correctly. It would do a tone and then there was silence for a while. It was making like a channel changing, searching kind of sound. So this message very well may be just flooded with pure static. Or there could be some kind of interference because something isn't right with that, with the, you know, with the charging thing. Anyways, I'm across the room now. I don't really hear any static, but if there's static on the return side, I may not be hearing it that well, especially because the receiver cap is pretty much completely spoiled, because at maximum volume, these phones are blaring loud, and I can hardly hear it as if it was on normal. Okay, I'm going to hang up now, over and out. End of messages. There's definitely a transmit issue. It kind of had like a, not a flutter to it, but almost, it, it was like the audio interpretation of what that charge light was doing. So maybe I was wrong about the power adapter. Maybe it's spoiled. So I've got another adapter here, which is comparable specifications. And let's see if this still flicks all crazy and acts nutty. Ah, look at that. It's normal now. Okay, so this adapter is shot. And the scrap that goes. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's try to fix it. Probably just the main cap is needs to be replaced. All right, let's do another testing message now that the uh, charging thing is not all gone haywire. One new message and 12 old messages. Message one. I dialed perfectly normally that time. It's still, the cap is still spoiled, but it sounds a little bit clearer. I'm sure this message will now sound completely normal. Over and out. End of messages. Okay, so the power adapter was spoiled. I think that this was in use up until the end of last year. And this adapter probably has almost 25 years worth of hours on it. So if the caps need to be replaced after over two decades of reliable service, so be it. I doubt this was plugged into a, a surge filter, so it probably was taking dirty power its whole life. We'll give that thing a try to fix it one day. Um, but in the meanwhile, if I want to use this phone, I just have to use another adapter. So it's going to be the same problem on the other one. The adapter is going to be spoiled. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that on both of those adapters. And that'll be it. So for the next video of the other one, I'm not going to bother with, with the original AC adapter because it's going to be the same issue and I'll just use this other one. So, we've got to get an OE antenna and a new receiver cap and a new power supply and then that phone should be ready for another couple decades of reliable service.